what is poppin' yo, welcome back to another YouTube video. Today we're taking a look at Season 2 from 2006, which is Doctor Who. It seems that we have a new Doctor Who season every year, from 2005 to 2000 and something, but it seemed to be early on in the Doctor's career, and with Season 2 comes a new Doctor. This is David Tennant. He still has his sidekick of Rose Tyler, again one of my personal favourite sidekicks. Rose Tyler is one of my favourite sidekicks, mainly because she is called Tyler, and there is a lot of Tylers in media. There is very few Tylers, and they always seem to be my favourite characters. From Super Noobs, Tyler was always my favourite, and also from School Bus Graveyard, Tyler was always my favourite. So us Tylers were few and far between, and we got to stick together because we're all fucking awesome. So the episodes sort of go with um, Doctor coming to a new Earth. We then have them like in a hospital. We have uh, them going to Scotland. We have the absolute epic... Um, story with K9, which is a robot. We have weird clockwork people. We have two episodes of Cybermen, which is fucking incredible. We have a load of random episodes, which I'm not too interested in. We have the Ood making a re return and Satan's Pit. We then have um a load of other episodes with Dalek coming and couple of others which aren't that interesting and then we also say goodbye to rose tyler and then meet our other new companion in the form of um I forgot her name i genuinely forgot her name it, it's the new one it's the new one you know uh I f f what what's her name what is her name why can't i remember it i don't know it's a new companion and to be fair, I think this, again, we're going in with season two, but introducing a new character. So it's introducing David Tennant, again, introducing a load of new characters, which are going to be recurring throughout the rest of Doctor Who, like the Cybermen. But it also brings in a couple of characters that we don't often see and probably will never see again, like these characters with the Clockwork People. The Clockwork People were pretty cool. Uh, I'm going to be honest, I quite liked the clockwork people with the girl in the fireplace. I liked that story. I thought it was really interesting. And again, just finishing watching this series again, I'm quite happy with it. Again, David Tennant is such a good doctor and one of my personal favorite doctors, probably because of nostalgia, but he's still so good and he's still very synonymous with Doctor Who to this day as he's come back for two specials with the Matt Smith special with the Day of the Doctor and also the newest special this Christmas time, which is the one in between Jodie Whittaker and the newest Doctor. Again, I've taken a look at that already on the channel. I took a look at it, look at, it at Christmas 2023. So you can go take a look at it if you do want to. But we are taking a very big Doctor Who-centric turn on the channel because we're going to be making some LEGO customs as well. Again, Doctor Who has had two LEGO sets and two LEGO Dimensions packs as well, which is very awesome and interesting to see. So Doctor Who has had its fair share in LEGO. I'm going to be honest, this does continue the pattern of just random sporadic one-off episodes which don't really follow on from the rest of them. Uh, there is a couple of references here and there, but again, like I said, as long as you watch episode 1 first and episode 13 last, and then mix and match with the middle ones, except for 5 and 6, because they're like a double whammy with Cyber Cybermen, you could watch them in any order you want and it would still make sense story-wise. There isn't really a set order, and again, as per usual, there is also a Christmas special uh for each season again we're getting one doctor who season per year so there's going to be a christmas special thrown in there and i don't think the christmas specials are that special to warrant them their own video like i did with day of the doctor i felt like that one was a pretty special special so that one does deserve its own video so i will just be throwing in the christmas specials with the season reviews and the series reviews as and when i go so Rose Tyler, again, gets a lot of screen time. This is her second season and her final season, and it does seem to follow that trend where sidekicks do only get, like, two seasons, and then that's it. Each sidekick seems to get two seasons, and then they're gone, and they get replaced with a new one. And I'm not a huge fan of that trend, I will be honest. I think um, 
there's a lot better ways to deal with it and a lot better ways to, um, you know, change things up. But it's like every doctor gets two sidekicks, one to start their journey and one to end it before they transition into the next stage. And then that, like, companion will transfer over majority of the time. Uh, it doesn't happen in, like, Amy Pond's case. It doesn't also happen in this next sidekick's case, which we will talk a little bit more about um, in the next season review we do tomorrow, so do stay tuned for that because it's all about Doctor Who for the next seven days. And, like, some of these episodes are absolute fucking baggers. There isn't any scary ones in this season. Normally, Doctor Who has its fair share of witty, exciting moments and its scary moments. There's no scary one here. It is all pretty cool. It's all pretty fine. And there isn't anything over the top or threatening here. Obviously, the Doctor has his witty, witty banter, his very creative, crazy self where he's jumping around, talking, being very excitable and ecstatic. And I like that from this one. Like, this is where the ecstatic, sort of happy excitedness comes from, because David Tennant brought a whole new feel to the Doctor. He brought a whole new energy and a vibe to it, and every Doctor does bring their own unique vibe and characteristics to it. However... This one was really cool. This one was a significant change from the last one because he was bouncy, he was bubbly, he was charismatic, he was energetic, he was all over the place. And he brought that sort of hyperactive focus like every time he got into something new or that he was working on something. It was just this whole new world for this character. And I think that's why everyone fell in love with this version of Doctor Who, with this David Tennant variation, this 10th Doctor, because of his new take on it. And as you pro progress with this sort of Doctor Who, you sort of see everyone trying to emulate that and everyone trying to also be as bubbly and as charismatic, but doing it in their own unique way. Again, we have, like, villains returning with the Daleks. Again, I'm not a huge fan of the Daleks. They are very important to the Doctor Who storyline, and they are, like, a key character. Same with the Cybermen, and this is, like, not the first time they've been introduced, but it's the first time that they've been reimagined. We had the Cybermen and the Daleks all the way back in, like, the 1990s version of the Doctors, but... With these ones, they've been souped up. They look a lot nicer. They look a lot cleaner. And they look so fucking cool. They also look quite threatening. And they have a very unique look to them that's a lot more streamlined compared to how they used to look. But again, Doctor Who is still in its early stages. It is also only 2006. So the practical effects still are the majority of what Doctor Who is. There's no sort of CGI or anything like that. And any CGI that there is isn't that great it's it's a little lackluster and going back to watch it f uh like now in 2024 uh again it's like 20 years ago 20 tw uh, 19 years ago so it does look a little outdated it does look a little jarring and a little uncomfortable to watch nowadays but it did look really good back in the day because when this came out i should have been like three I, can't, I was born in 20, 2003, so I should have been like three when this came out. But I do remember having it in like a little flip book, one of those binder cases where you kept all those DVDs. It's so nostalgic. And Doctor Who is very core to my childhood. I will, I will admit I was constantly watching Doctor Who. I fucking love Doctor Who. And specifically, some of the episodes were a lot better than others and definitely my favorite. I was one of those like kids who rewatched episodes because I liked the villains. But I wouldn't actually watch it. I would just play with my toys. And I'm going to be honest, I was a very strange child. Like, if I saw a character that I liked on TV, like in Ben 10, I wanted a figure of it. And you probably see that translate into my Lego customs, where it's like, if I see a character that I like, I, I want to make them in Lego custom. And I'm already thinking about it, and I'm already sort of delving into how I'd make them into Lego custom. So I think that's where that stems from. Again, just a little bit of therapy talk here, and a little bit about myself and that my history with Doctor Who. But, you know... I don't know where I was going with that tangent, I'm going to be honest. I don't I don't actually know. Back to Doctor Who. Back to um, the greatest uh, thing to come out of British television. I don't often watch British TV. I really don't like Hollyoaks. I really don't like Emmerdale. I don't like EastEnders. I don't like any of that stuff. But Doctor Who? That's a British TV show that I can get behind. In Inbetweeners? That's a British TV show I can get behind. 
I don't watch anything else um, that's made by British TV. I will admit, British TV is pretty shit. Um, it ain't that great. I'm gonna be honest. British TV just ain't it. it it's all like Love Island and like Big Brother, and it's it's just not that great. So having Doctor Who is a little bit of breath of fresh air, and it just gives me that sort of little bit of TV that I used to like to watch, you know? Like, other than the kids' channels, like the CITV, CBBC, Doctor Who gave a little bit of that mystery, that little bit sci-fi, and basically gave me that nerdy sort of drip feed that I do enjoy. Just got me into stuff all nerdy and time travel dimensions and going on doing adventures, and this one does sort of do that. It's like one-off wacky adventures. It gives you the ability to just watch one episode and see if you enjoy it. Just get into Doctor Who and feel the vibe of this new sort of Doctor before it gets into the main story where we have a sort of chronological order that you should start watching things in in season three. But we'll talk about that just a little bit later uh, because... Other than that, I hope you all enjoyed this YouTube video. I'll see you all in the next one, and I hope you all have an excellent day, and goodbye. Stay home and stay safe.